Hello everyone. This is Dr. Meyer here with a video for you on symmetrical scales, including the chromatic, whole tone, octatonic, and hexatonic scales. Before we dig into the theory of symmetrical scales, let's listen to an example where a symmetrical scale is used. Debussy uses a symmetrical scale in the last five measures of this example and following from The Snow is Dancing from his Children's Corner Suite. Have a listen. Notice how the sound differs from tonal, major, and minor scales that we're used to hearing. Symmetrical scales give a sort of ethereal or otherworldly sound. Let's dig in to find out why. So what is a symmetrical scale? These scales have pitch classes that divide an octave evenly with a specific repetition of an interval or intervals. Let's look, for example, at the scale that Debussy uses in his example. When we take an inventory of the pitches in order from lowest to highest, we can see that each interval between the pitches is a whole step. We call this the whole tone scale. This means that the scale could technically begin on any pitch, as there are no other intervals other than whole steps present here. The multiple rotations available in the whole tone scale helps to give it that otherworldly or ethereal sound, as there's no drive toward any specific tonic other than sheer repetition of a single pitch to lead the listener's ear. In Western music, there are specific patterns of half and whole steps in the scales to create a sense of drive toward tonic, but symmetrical scales lack these tendency tones, so they sound a little more foreign or exotic to our Western ears. Have a listen to the scale all by itself. Which intervals can be used to make symmetrical scales? There are six different interval classes or interval distances that are good candidates for creating a symmetrical scale. An interval class is the shortest distance between two pitches. For example, interval class 1 equals a semitone, or a minor second. Interval class 1 and interval class 11 are equivalent, as the shortest distance between a major 7 can be inverted to a minor second. If we repeat an interval class, the resulting cycle is a chord or scale that we can use to construct a symmetrical scale. What do interval class cycles look like? Interval classes 1 and 2 create scales that you already know and have just seen in the Debussy. Interval class 3 creates a fully diminished 7th chord, which divides the octave evenly. You can think of this as the stack of minor thirds that you already know when you construct a fully diminished 7th chord. In fact, there are only three fully diminished 7th chords that can be constructed using interval class 3 cycle. That is, they could have different roots or different spellings, but would be enharmonically the same. This will be important for constructing a symmetrical scale later on. An interval class 4 cycle creates an augmented triad, which also divides the octave evenly. There are only four different enharmonically spelled augmented triads that can be constructed by using this cycle. Again, this information will be important for constructing a symmetrical scale later on. Interval class 5 is the only cycle that hits all 12 chromatic pitches before returning to the starting pitch and therefore does not divide our octave evenly. Lastly, interval class 6 creates a two-note tritone which divides the octave evenly, but does not help us create any scales. So, let's see how each cycle plays out in a scale. The first interval class cycle is interval class 1, or repeated semitone or major second. This scale is the one that you know and love to practice, I'm sure, the chromatic scale, which is made up of only half steps. Here's a sound clip of this symmetrical scale.
Chromatic scales are not often used in tonal music as all 12 pitches are present and it makes it somewhat difficult to center around a single tonic, but it is a symmetrical scale nonetheless. Interval class cycle two is comprised of repeated whole steps, and as we have seen, this is called a whole tone scale. Now there are only two possible iterations of the whole tone scale which divide the octave evenly. One which contains the top pitches on our staff here, and the one on the bottom staff. If you begin this scale on another note, you'll end up with the same pitches. We call this whole tone zero if it contains C, and whole tone one if it contains C sharp or D flat. These numbers are with reference to pitch class integers, uh, with C being zero and C sharp or D flat being one in the mod 12 pitch class space. Listen to what these two scales sound like. The octatonic scale is a symmetrical scale that does not result from a single repeated interval class cycle, but rather a layer of two interval class cycles on top of one another. As we saw, an interval class cycle three creates three different fully diminished seventh chords. If we layer two of these chords, the resulting scale is an octatonic scale. Compare the chords above to each note in the scale and see this alteration of the seventh chord members. Below, you can see a second scale construction using two different seventh chords. Now, you may be saying to yourself, this is not a symmetrical scale. It uses two different intervals. The octatonic scale does contain two different intervals, a semitone and a whole tone, but they are alternating and still create a scale which divides the octave evenly. Constructing and labeling the octatonic can be a little confusing, so you have to recognize which seventh chords you're using. This makes it a little bit easier to label. It's good to note here that there are six different possibilities for the octatonic scale construction, as the three different seventh chords combine in pairs to make six possibilities. We Theorists label these based on whether the scale contains pitch classes 0, 1, as our bottom one here, 1, 2, which is not pictured, and 2, 3, like in these examples here. Each scale will only ever contain one of these options. So make sure you're checking your pitch classes before you start labeling. One last labeling element needed is to describe whether the scale begins on a half step or it begins on a whole step. If the scale begins on a half step or a semitone, like this example on the bottom, we want to label it with an A. So octatonic 01A is the proper label for this bottom scale here. Likewise, if our scale begins with a whole step, as in the top scale here, we want to label it with a B after the number indication. So octatonic 2, 3, B is the proper label for this top staff here. Here are what these two octatonic scales sound like. The final symmetrical scale that we'll discuss is the hexatonic scale. The hexatonic scale construction is similar to the octatonic in that it contains layers of two interval class four cycles, or augmented triads. Observe the alternation of the two augmented triads in the top scale here. The interval content of these scales is then an alternation of semitones and minor thirds. Because the interval class 4 cycle has 4 augmented chords, there are actually 4 different transpositions that we can get by alternating semitones and minor thirds with this pitch content. 
And just like the octatonic, we will label them based on their pitch content and starting interval size to differentiate them from one another. The possibilities are hexatonic 0, 1, as below here, hexatonic 1, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 4, as this above staff here. Lastly, we need to discern whether it begins on a semitone or half step and label it with an A as our bottom one here, hexatonic 0, 1, A, or if it begins with a minor third, we're going to use the label B here as above, hexatonic 3, 4, B. Here's a clip of these two scales so you can hear what they sound like. Now it's your turn to practice. Construct a whole tone one scale starting on any pitch in the scale and then construct octatonic 2-3-B starting on any pitch in the scale. Make sure that your interval size reflects the B designation on that octatonic there. And as a hint, it's helpful to think of the fully diminished chords, which the roots are integers 2 and 3, and sort of put them together in scale order. Make sure you pause the video here to give yourself plenty of time to construct these two scales. For whole tone one, you should have the pitches F, G, A, B, C sharp or D flat, D sharp or E flat. Since this is a symmetrical scale, you could have started this on any pitch here. So as long as you have all of these present, you are correct. For octatonic 2, 3, B, you must begin on a whole step in the pattern and your pitches must include E flat or D sharp, F, G flat or F sharp, A flat or G sharp, A, B, C, and D. Again, if you started on E flat, G flat, A, or C, you have the B interval designation, so you are correct. Here's what these two scales sound like. Let's review what we learned in this video. Now we know that symmetrical scales are a result of a repeated interval pattern. These interval patterns make symmetrical scales sound exotic or foreign to our ears and can be used to this effect in composition, if you like. To construct these scales, just repeat an interval class number cycle. For example, interval class 1 and 2 cycles create the chromatic and whole tone scales respectively. For octatonic and hexatonic, we need to overlap two cycles and alternate an intervallic pattern to make these scales symmetrical. And lastly, when analyzing or labeling, we have to make sure to take inventory of all the pitches and notice how the scale begins intervallically so that we can label it accurately. That is all for now. Thank you so much for watching.